Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through pancreatitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash pancreatitis or in the general surgery section of the ZeroDefinals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Pancreatitis refers to inflammation of the pancreas. And it can be categorized as acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis. This section mainly relates to acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis presents with a rapid onset of inflammation and symptoms. After an episode of acute pancreatitis, normal function usually returns to the pancreas. Chronic pancreatitis involves longer-term inflammation and symptoms with a progressive and permanent deterioration in pancreatic function. So what are the causes of pancreatitis? The three key causes of pancreatitis to remember are gallstones, alcohol and ERCP procedures. Gallstones pancreatitis is caused by gallstones getting trapped at the end of the biliary system at the ampulla of Vata and blocking the flow of bile and pancreatic juice into the duodenum. The reflux of bile into the pancreatic duct and the prevention of pancreatic juice containing enzymes from being secreted results in inflammation in the pancreas. Gallstones pancreatitis is more common in women and older patients. Alcohol is directly toxic to pancreatic cells and this can result in inflammation and pancreatitis. Alcohol-induced pancreatitis is more common in men and younger patients. There's a popular mnemonic that goes, I get smashed for remembering a long list of causes of pancreatitis. I refers to idiopathic. G refers to gallstones. E refers to ethanol or alcohol consumption. T refers to trauma. S refers to steroids. M refers to mumps infection. A refers to autoimmune. S refers to scorpion sting. And this is one that everybody remembers but is never relevant. H refers to hyperlipidemia. E refers to ERCP procedures. And D refers to drugs, particularly fruzamide, thiazide diuretics and azathioprine. So let's talk about the presentation. Acute pancreatitis typically presents with an acute onset of severe epigastric pain. This pain may radiate through to the back. It can be associated with vomiting. There's abdominal tenderness. And the patient is systemically unwell. For example, having a low-grade fever and tachycardia or a fast heart rate. Acute pancreatitis is a clinical diagnosis based mainly on the presenting features and the amylase level. So let's talk about the investigations. Initial investigations are required as with any presentation of an acute abdomen. Importantly, these investigations need to include the blood tests that are required for calculating the Glasgow score, which we'll talk about shortly. A full blood count is required for the white cell count. Use and ease blood test is required for the urea level. Liver function tests are required for the transaminases and the albumin level. A blood calcium is required and an arterial blood gas or ABG is required for the PaO2 and the blood glucose level. Amylase is the blood test to remember for pancreatitis. It's raised more than three times the upper limit of normal in acute pancreatitis. 
In chronic pancreatitis, the amylase may not rise because the pancreas has reduced function. A C-reactive protein or CRP blood test can be used to monitor the levels of inflammation in the body. This is a very non-specific blood test which can be raised with any cause of inflammation. An ultrasound scan is the initial investigation of choice for assessing for gallstones in patients with suspected gallstones pancreatitis. However, it's not very useful for visualising the pancreatitis itself. A CT of the abdomen can assess for complications of pancreatitis such as necrosis, abscesses and fluid collections. It's not usually required unless complications are suspected. For example, the patient is becoming more unwell. Let's talk about the Glasgow score. The Glasgow score is used to assess for the severity of the pancreatitis. It gives a numerical score based on how many of the key criteria are present. A score of 0 or 1 indicates mild pancreatitis. A score of 2 indicates moderate pancreatitis and a score of 3 or more indicates severe pancreatitis. The criteria for the Glasgow score can be remembered using the pancreas mnemonic and you give one point for each answer that's true. P refers to PaO2 or a partial pressure of oxygen that's less than 8 kPa. A refers to age above 55. N refers to neutrophils, and this is a white blood cell count above 15. C refers to calcium, and this is when the calcium is less than 2. R refers to the blood urea level being more than 16. E refers to enzymes, specifically the LDH enzyme being more than 600 or the AST or ALT being more than 200. A refers to albumin being less than 32. And S refers to sugar, referring to the blood glucose level being more than 10. So let's talk about the management of acute pancreatitis. Patients with acute pancreatitis can become very unwell rapidly. They require admission for supportive management. Moderate or severe cases should be considered for management on the High Dependency Unit or HDU or the Intensive Care Unit or ICU. Management involves initial resuscitation with an ABCDE approach, IV fluids, making the patient nil by mouth, analgesia, careful monitoring, treatment of gallstones if there's gallstones pancreatitis, for example with an ERCP procedure or a cholecystectomy. Antibiotics may be used if there's evidence of a specific infection, for example an abscess or an infected necrotic area of the pancreas and treatment of any complications. For example, if there's a large collection that develops, this can be drained either by an endoscopic or a percutaneous procedure. Most patients will improve within three to seven days when they present with acute pancreatitis and have proper treatment. Let's talk about the complications of acute pancreatitis. These include necrosis of the pancreas, infection in a necrotic area of the pancreas, the formation of an abscess, acute peripancreatic fluid collections, pseudocysts, which are collections of pancreatic juice, which can develop four weeks after the acute pancreatitis, and finally, chronic pancreatitis. So let's talk in more detail about chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis refers to chronic inflammation in the pancreas. It results in fibrosis and a reduced function of the pancreatic tissue. Alcohol is the most common cause of chronic pancreatitis. It presents with similar symptoms to acute pancreatitis, but generally the symptoms are less intense and longer lasting. 
Key complications are chronic epigastric pain, a loss of exocrine function of the pancreas resulting in a lack of the pancreatic enzymes, particularly lipase, which are normally secreted into the gastrointestinal tract, a loss of the endocrine function of the pancreas resulting in a lack of insulin leading to diabetes, Damage and strictures to the duct system resulting in obstruction in the excretion of pancreatic juice and bile. And the formation of pseudocysts or abscesses. So what's the management of chronic pancreatitis? First of all, the patient needs to abstain from alcohol and smoking, which is really important in managing the symptoms and the complications. Analgesia can be used to manage pain, although it can be severe and very difficult to manage. Patients may require replacement of the pancreatic enzymes, particularly lipase, with tablets called Creon, if there is a loss of these pancreatic enzymes. Otherwise, a lack of enzymes leads to malabsorption of fat, greasy stools, which is called steatorrhea, and deficiency in fat-soluble vitamins. If patients develop diabetes, they require subcutaneous insulin regimes. If the patient has strictures and obstruction to the biliary system and the pancreatic duct, an ERCP procedure with stenting can be used to treat these. And surgery may be required by specialist centres to treat complications that develop, such as severe chronic pain, where the patient may benefit from draining the ducts and removing inflamed pancreatic tissue, obstruction of the biliary system and the pancreatic duct, pseudocysts and abscesses. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.